What's up, everybody? This is Derek Kirby with the Dallas Prospect, back with another Cowboys video here. And this one is, frankly, a little bit of a difficult conversation to have because the two sides of this debate are so entrenched in their perspectives that it's hard to really have the discussion in a productive and meaningful way. Nevertheless, I am going to attempt to do so today. Now, this is a video adaptation of my latest article for Blogging the Boys, and in it, we are going to talk about Jalen Smith. And if you're reading the title, you probably already understand where I ultimately fall on this debate. Now, nobody questions that the Jalen Smith story is an incredible one. This was a guy who, coming out of college prior to his final game, was believed to be a generational talent linebacker. This was a can't-miss prospect. But unfortunately, in the Fiesta Bowl against Ohio State, after a play on a seemingly innocuous little bump from uh, a defender, or an offensive player, excuse me, Jalen Smith's leg buckled and hyperextended to such an extreme degree that he majorly, majorly messed up his knee, basically suffered what was believed to be a career-threatening, if not outright ending, injury. He then went on to the draft, where the Cowboys surprised a lot of people by taking him up near the top of the second round. This was the 2016 NFL draft. This is the Ezekiel Elliott, Dak Prescott draft. This is a major acquisition for a guy they knew wasn't going to be ready to play for at least a year. But because their team doctor was the physician who had performed the surgery, they felt confident in the early indications that he would eventually recapture that form. However, he would face a lot of adversity. It took a long time for him to get back to the field. As I said, he didn't play at all in 2016, and there were concerns lingering about nerve damage through the leg, down into the foot, causing drop foot. Basically, think about when your foot falls completely asleep, and then you have to go walk around on it, but have that numbness kind of extend up your leg as well. Not fun. Not easy. Now go try and play linebacker in the modern NFL, where you have to change directions fluid hips, accelerate, move through traffic and just gobs of chaos on any given play, whether it's trying to get through to the quarterback, the running back to blow up a running play, or chase down a wide receiver going down the field. It's not easy. It's not very, really, it's not possible. But Jalen Smith in 2017 made his return to the field. That alone is a triumph. That season, he played in 16 games, started six of them, and it looked like the return to the field was basically going to be the end of the inspiration. Like, that's that was the accomplishment. That was the triumph. Because he looked lost in coverage. He couldn't change directions quickly. He couldn't, like, if you got him going downhill, he was a monster. The problem is the modern NFL doesn't allow linebackers to just play one direction, dead sprint, go, no opposition. You have to be able to move laterally, to change directions in an instant. And he doesn't have that. And especially in 2017, did not have that. There would always be this awkward sort of stutter step as he would almost like rev up his engine, like kick-starting an engine to change directions. And that's just too slow with how fast the game is now. So at the end of the 2017 season, you really thought like, man, I don't know. But then 2018 happened. 2018 was Jalen Smith's best season. Now, he didn't make the Pro Bowl, but I think he was legitimately a Pro Bowl snub that year. In that season, you paired him with fellow linebacker Leighton Van Der Esch, who the Cowboys took in the first round that season. And it was a revelation for the Dallas linebacking core. Jalen Smith, his deficiencies didn't look as bad as they did the year before. 
and his impact was undeniable. Like I said, he was a fairly, fairly to say, Pro Bowl snub that season. And he started all 16 games. It was a major, major turnaround. Dallas likes to use him to try and negate his weaknesses. They try to use him in more of a pass rushing capacity. And that was his best year for sacking the quarterback as well with four sacks. But, unfortunately for Jalen, and to a lesser extent, and I'll get into this in a minute for LVE, it didn't work beyond 2018 as well. It was diminishing returns. In 2019, Jalen Smith actually did make the Pro Bowl as a replacement player, but it was nowhere near the resume he had put together in 2018. Jalen Smith, yes, he can still record a bunch of tackles, but he's not going to be a guy that's stopping the ball around the line a whole lot. He's usually getting stuff five, six, seven, eight yards downfield when he's bringing guys down. He still can't change directions very easily. His sack numbers dropped from four to two and a half, and then in 2020, dropped to one and a half. So this is a guy who you're trying to sell us on his best aspect that he brings is his pass rush, but he's he's got less than, what, he's got basically 10 career sacks at this point. That's not good. Not for the other trade-off you're getting, whether it's the, the plays he can't physically make anymore and the biggest illustration of that was this year, last Friday in the preseason game against the Arizona Cardinals. He gets beat bad. First, it's a misread, which that's going to happen. You're going to have guys get fooled. But then it's slow to react, and the speed, he looks like he's moving through clay, while Chase Edmonds, the running back for the Cardinals, just blows past him, so much so that Jalen, in trying to recover, is so slow that LVE, who's playing middle linebacker, actually beats him to the running back despite having been over on the other side of the field. Like, he's not nearly as close, and yet he gets there before Jalen does. And this is after it's already gone for a significant game. It was a very painful illustration of the physical limitations of Jalen Smith at this point in his career. So what do we know? 2019, he made the Pro Bowl. Again, that is a triumph. Whether or not you think he deserved it more in 2018, the fact is he came back from an injury no one, most no one, thought he would come back from. And he got back on the field, and he made a Pro Bowl, and had another year where people felt he was snubbed. That is a true inspirational story. And his reward was getting a fat contract. Out of nowhere, we get a six-year, $68 million extension for Jalen Smith. This is year two of that deal. And Jalen Smith was dreadful in 2020. Now, to be fair, the entire Cowboys defense was dreadful. But Jalen Smith looked lost at times. His ability to cover in space was terrible. You have a guy that limited where if he's downhill and he doesn't have to move through chaos or through other human body shed blockers or anything like that, if you let him do that, yeah, he can still make plays and he can still look damn good. There, was, there were plays in the Arizona game that showed that still. Just a couple plays, I think, after the coverage one everyone's focused on. But you're going to have a dozen or more instances throughout the course of a season where you see the bad Jalen coverage plays, where you see his inability to change direction absolutely torching, torching the defense. And you can't have that. You just can't have that out of your starting linebacker in really in this situation, like this day and age at all. But if you're trying to rebuild the defense from what was, in many regards, the worst defense in franchise history last year, you can't have Jalen Smith playing a significant role. I said earlier, the belief that you can just use him as a pass rusher. Well, he's not one of your best pass rushers. His sack totals certainly don't offset that and drive that point home. He's not a better pass rusher than Bradley Anai, who I just did a video on the other day. So does it make sense 
to try and move him at that point? Does it make sense to try and justify utilizing him in this role when it's now stunting the growth of other guys? This is not a knock on Jalen. Like, I understand the emotion behind this discussion. People get angry because they feel like you're, or in this case, me, attacking Jalen directly. I'm not. I'm saying I think at this stage of his career, Jalen Smith, with his physical limitations because of the freak injury he suffered, are just catching up to him. And it's sad to say because he's a very young player still. He's in his mid-20s. The fact that he's already at this point, it's, it's unfortunate. Like, it's sad to see. But it doesn't take away from the incredible Jalen Smith story. The problem is it feels like the story is what we're seizing on rather than the reality. Micah Parsons is an absolute freak of nature and a beast. He is going to be a major impact player for this defense. LVE, I mentioned him earlier. You know, the Cowboys declined to pick up his fifth-year option this year, and it's because he's had his own injury concerns with his neck, what his long-term viability looks like, and they had to make that distinction. So you might be wondering, well, why did the Cowboys then, you know, basically financially commit to Jalen this year if, if they were going to now be talking about the possibility, and it is a possibility, he gets cut today. Why would they do that? I think it's because at the time they had to commit, they didn't have an alternative. You hadn't gotten to the draft yet, so you didn't even know who you were going to have. You were targeting uh, a quarterback. You were tar targeting you know, Sutton or someone like that. You weren't looking necessarily at a linebacker. Now, thankfully, a damn good one fell into your lap, and you'll take it, and he'll be a, you know, a big player for Dallas moving forward, but you didn't have that idea yet. What you did have is, hey, we're not picking up LVE's fifth-year option. Uh, Keon O'Neal is coming in here, but even though he has experience with Dan Quinn, it was at a different position, and he's coming off of a major injury, so we don't know what he'll look like. And uh, we kind of have no choice but to commit to Jalen because what else do we know? What, what do we know right now? And we just paid Jalen anyway, so we kind of have to. So the Cowboys picked up his contract, for this year, committed to it, on the hook for it. And, you know, that's a fairly nice chunk of change that he's due this year. And they're going to have to figure out how to navigate that. I want to see, it's $9.8 million he counts against the cap this year. So you have to figure out how to justify that, right? Like, money can drive the politics of guys getting to play. But LVE at least when healthy, which he is right now, is very usable. He might not be rookie LVE like he was when he made the Pro Bowl and set the NFL on fire and gave Cowboy fans especially this notion of, holy crap, between LVE and Jalen, we're set in the middle of our defense for years. By the way, that kind of mirrors previously, the early 2010s, what we felt about Sean Lee and Bruce Carter. Like, holy crap, we're set. This is awesome. We have, like, the best linebacking duo in the, in the league, or one of them at the very least. And similar to that instance, injuries undid both men. Both duos fell apart. At least LVE and Jalen played a lot of games together the past few years. But Lee and Carter never had a chance, man. You never even really got to see them at the height of their powers at the same time. It was kind of like Carter emerged after Lee was already lost for the year and the belief was coming into the new year with both men healthy, it would be different. But Carter regressed and Lee, you know, kind of did Sean Lee things. When he's healthy and right, he was incredible. When he wasn't, oh, it was not good. And a lot of times availability wasn't there. So in that regard, Jalen and LVE mirror those two, but they also kind of exceeded them, which was a rather low bar anyway. But it is what it is. The Cowboys have to make a decision. LVE is still usable right now. Jalen arguably is not. I would say realistically is not at this stage. But hey, you're on the hook for the money. So what are you going to do? Well, you have LVE. You have Jalen. You have Micah. You also have, for instance, Jabril Cox, who has been fantastic 
in camp. He was a steal in the draft getting him where you did. But you're not going to be able to give him the kind of exposure and playing time he probably needs to develop, certainly not as quickly as he could develop, if you're paying Jalen and putting him there instead. Now, you already moved Jalen to a position of less need. You're trying to minimize his, his exposure as much as you can to better utilize his strengths. But throughout camp, and it's been documented by a lot of different media members covering camp in Oxnard, now even back at the star, and we saw it in the preseason, the Cardinals play and game in general being the biggest indicator of it. You see how limited he is. He's getting burned frequently. He's getting taken advantage of, targeted, and it's making life difficult. So you brought in Dan Quinn and basically said, hey, for the love of God, please fix this defense. Make it good again. Make it serviceable at the very least. He's not beholden to Jalen Smith. Jalen Smith might be a contract that you know the Cowboys are already paying. Like I said, he's in year two. But Quinn is not beholden to Jalen Smith. If it doesn't work and he can't just wave a magic wand and make Jalen look anything like 2018 Jalen... Hell, 2019 Jalen even, then you really have to consider whether or not it makes sense to keep Jalen on the roster. Or if he should be, even though there is a financial cap hit you're taking on this year versus if you cut him next year or make him uh, a designated June 1st cut, you have to consider those things. And I think for the Cowboys, Jalen Smith, as great as the storybook is, we've kind of reached past the epilogue at this point. We had the return. That was improbable. We had the Pro Bowl season, followed by the following year with an actual Pro Bowl designation, but you get my point. And you had the fat payday. That is the success story. The reality no longer matches the fairy tale. And I think because of that, Dallas needs to look long and hard at whether or not he is a growth stopper for the younger linebackers on this team. Because I don't think he's even your fourth best linebacker right now. And you're definitely not paying that guy. We've already marginalized his role to a degree. I'm not then paying the guy to take him off the field even more in favor of someone else. If he can't start, then he's he doesn't make sense to me at this point. So yeah, let me know in the comments. Do you think Jalen Smith should still be a Cowboy moving forward? Do you think he still has plenty left in the tank and just needs an opportunity to show it? And that what we saw in the preseason is a a situation where you're going to not risk injury, especially a guy like uh, like Jalen with his injury history being what it is, that you're not going to go full speed and that just made it look worse than it really was. Let me know. Let me know your opinions. I expect... A fair bit of people who agree with me, and I expect a fair bit of people who want to tear my head off and call me a moron just for having this take. But I think you look at it, and if you remove the emotion from it, it feels like this. It, that's funny to say. Remove the emotion, and then I follow up with feels. If you remove the emotion from it, it seems to be pretty clear. He's not going back to 2018 Jalen Smith anymore, and that alone is justification for reconsidering his place on the roster, especially given what you're paying him. You paid him for a form he can no longer live up to. And if he's in the way of other guys, other young promising rookies that you have and linebackers that you want to develop, you got to make that consideration. But again, that's it for my time. Leave a comment, subscribe. Check out more videos. Consider becoming a member or a patron. You will get exclusive early access to content, including this video. And uh, yeah, till next time, guys, remember, remember, every legend was once a prospect. Peace.